Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today we have a 2015 Honda Odyssey and we're going to be showing you how to install the Draw Tight Max Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver. But before we do that, why don't we kind of check it out and make sure this is something that'll work for you. So I know whenever I'm going down the road, I see these Odysseys being used uh, to do pretty much a little bit of everything. These are really versatile vehicles, uh, so it makes sense. I know I see people with bike racks, cargo carriers, uh, tow and utility trailers, and even small boats, and just about everything in between. Um, so if it were me and I was looking for a hitch for my Honda, uh, I would want something that could handle pretty much anything you want to throw at it. And it would be nice if it looked good as well. And with this setup here, uh, that's going to cover all those bases. So this is a class three hitch that's so going to give us that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening with a reinforced collar for extra strength. Now that size opening is a super common size and a ton of different accessories uh, will work with it. This is going to have the standard 5 8 pinhole. Uh, keep in mind a pen and clip does not come included but if you need one you can grab it here to your trailer. It is going to have a smaller hole in front of it there and that's going to be used uh, for a J pin which is a stabilization device. And if you use that, what it's gonna do is eliminate any slop or play here in the connection point and keep anything you have inside of your hitch uh, from bouncing around more or less. You're gonna have loop style safety chain openings, which they're relatively large. And I will say they're nice and thick. So to me, it'd give me some peace of mind knowing I have some heavy duty here and they'll allow us to use pretty much any size hook that we might have. So one of the main things that really helps separate this hitch from some of the others is the way it's going to look. And honestly, I think it has a factory type appearance to it. Uh, it really does do a good job of kind of blending in. And that's because really the only thing you're going to be able to see is the receiver tube opening there, as opposed to some of the other hitches where you can see the whole main body of the hitch hanging down from under our van. As far as our hitch's weight capacities go, it's going to be some pretty high numbers. The maximum gross tongue weight rating it's going to be 525 pounds, and that's going to be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So it's a pretty high number. Really should be able to use pretty much any size bike rack or cargo carrier uh, that you'd want to, for example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 3,500 pounds, and that's going to be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Now I do always like to suggest, never a bad idea just to grab your Odyssey's owner's manual and make sure your Honda can pull that much weight safely. With that being said, if you do plan on doing some towing, not a bad idea either to grab some trailer wiring. That way the lights on your trailer will match up with the lights on the back of your Odyssey and you'll be safe and legal. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be about 13 inches. So if you do plan on doing some towing, chances are pretty good you're going to need to get a ball mount with a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's going to be about 5 inches. And you can use that measurement to figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. So at the end of the day, a hitch you really can't go wrong with. Now as far as the installation goes, uh, since this one is hidden, you are going to have to remove the fascia, so it is a little bit more work compared to some of the other ones, but honestly, I think spending a little bit of extra time is well worth it. Speaking of installation, let's go ahead and put the hitch on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here underneath the back of our Odyssey, and what we're going to need to do is remove our mud flaps and our underbody panel. So to get the mud flaps off, we're gonna be working right in front of them here and pulling out some fasteners. So if you look at our mud flap along the uh, edge here, we're gonna have two Phillips head screws. So go ahead and get those removed. And then if we kind of come more towards the corner, you can see there we have a 10 millimeter bolt. So we'll pull that one out. We should be able to grab our mud flap, lower it down, 
we'll set it off to the side and do the same thing to get the other one removed. So now we can focus on the underbody panel over here on the driver's side. We're gonna have three push pin type fasteners that we need to pull out first. So with these, you can use a trim panel tool or flathead screwdriver. You're gonna pry kind of underneath the head of that fastener and work it out. Sometimes these can be a little dirty and kind of tricky to get out. So you can use a combination of both those tools that I mentioned and a lot of times it makes it a little easier. Now if you look against the front side of this panel, closest to the front of our vehicle, uh, up in this little cutout, there's gonna be a 10 millimeter fastener. If you look right there, we're gonna have another Phillips head screw. Get that one removed. And at this point, we should be able to take our panel, kind of sneak it out and set it off to the side. Now, if you look in the center of our fascia, we're gonna have two more push pin type fasteners. Again, we'll use our screwdriver or our trim tool to get those removed. If you end up pulling these out and the center comes out without the base, not a big deal. You can simply just pry the base out as well. And these just go back together. So do the same thing to get this one removed as well. Now, if you move over here to our wheel wells, here along this edge at the top corner of our fascia, we're gonna have a Phillips head screw. So I'll go ahead and pull that out. And I'll just repeat that process over on the other side. Now, if we open up our hatch along this edge here, we're gonna have a couple of fasteners on each side of our van, one here and one here. And we're gonna pull those out using a five millimeter uh, hex head Allen key. Once both of these are removed, we'll take the ones out from the other side as well. Now with an extra set of hands, we can actually remove our fascia. And so you wanna start here at the corner. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is just kinda of grab it and carefully start to pull it away. More or less just kind of unclips. Be careful when you pull it off, you may have some type of electrical connector, uh, which in our case we do over here on the driver's side. And the way to get that removed is you're gonna to wanna to push down on the center of it and pull the two apart. Now that we have our bumper free, you can go ahead and set it somewhere safe. Now we can go ahead and remove our bumper beam. So on each side of our vehicle, and here we're gonna have a 14 millimeter head bolt. So you take your socket and extension, run it through there, and pull uh, the bolt out. If it drops down in the bumper beam, not a huge deal. Once we get it removed, we can kind of dump it out the side. But I went ahead and already removed the bolts on the other side here. So when I pull this last one out, the bumper beam will come off. And we can set it to the side. If you look on each side of our vehicle, uh, there's gonna be this tab here that runs to the bottom of our frame rail. And it's not perfectly flat. And so just to help make our hitch fit up there a little bit better, what I'm gonna do is take a hammer and just kind of flatten uh, it out a little bit more. Now do this on both sides of our vehicle. Now what we can do is kind of get some of our hardware ready. And so these two attachment points here on the flat surface, um, what you're gonna do is take flat washers and just tape them uh, to the vehicle. And then on the bottom of our frame rail, it's gonna be multiple holes, okay? But this one here, it has threads in it. That's the one that we're gonna be focusing on and using it as an attachment point. 
So what I did, kind of cleaned off the bottom of this, and we're gonna take this uh, spacer block, and you can see the hole is offset. I'm gonna make sure that offset part is facing this way. That way it sits up there nice and flat. And we're gonna tape this to our vehicle as well. So line up that hole and push it in place. You'll do this to the other side of the vehicle as well. Same hardware attachment points. And the reason we're doing this is it's much easier to have the stuff held in place while we get the hitch up as opposed to trying to hold the hitch and, and get this all lined up at the same time. So before we get our hitch in place, I figured it'd be useful to kind of go over the hardware and the process that we're uh, going to use. So this attachment point down here, you're gonna have this uh, thicker bolt and a conical tooth washer. You're gonna make sure that the teeth on the washer are gonna face this way up towards the hitch. So when we put our hitch uh, on, we're first going to secure these bolts inside of the frame and that's gonna hold the hitch into position. And while the hitch is then in position, what we can do is take our bumper beam, put our bumper beam on over the hitch and then we're gonna take the included smaller bolts with smaller conical tooth washers, run these not only through the bumper beam, through the hitch and back into those factory attachment points. Now with an extra set of hands, we can get our hitch lined up and use the hardware that we talked about to get it secured in place. So now that we have this hardware in place and hand tight, we'll come back with a 19 millimeter and snug them up. Now again, with an extra set of hands, we can take our bumper beam, we're gonna line that up with our hitch, then we can take our bolt, and what I found, if you take an extension and a 17 millimeter socket, kind of do one of these deals, you can work that bolt through the bumper beam, get it lined up, and we're just gonna do that for all of these and get them hand tight. Now that we have all of these bolts in place and hand tight, come in with a 17 millimeter and snug them all down. At this point, we can come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all of the hardware to the amount specified in our instructions. All right, so if you look at our bumper beam, we're gonna have these um, pieces of steel that kind of protrude out from it. Well, since the hitch pushed our bumper beam out a little bit, what can happen is these corners can kind of make contact with our rear fascia and leave little dimples there. Um, so what you can do to avoid that is take a hammer and beat in these four corners just a little bit, and that'll give us some clearance. Uh, that way we won't have those dimples on our bumper. Once you have that done, we can take our foam piece and drop that back into place. Now we need to do is trim out a couple spots here on our fascia. So there's uh, instruction diagram uh, in your instructions. It tells you where to cut. So I went ahead and just drew that out, measured everything up. It says relatively thin plastic, so you could use a pair of snips, uh, maybe a sharp utility knife. I'm just gonna use a Dremel tool to speed things up a little bit. Uh, but with that being said, I'll go ahead and get that material removed. Now 
And then over here on the side of her fascia, on the bottom, we have this little piece here that kind of just goes over our exhaust pipe almost. And this can interfere with the hitch and getting the bumper back on. So I'm just gonna trim that area out. That way everything will clear and it'll fit properly. Now that we have our fascia trimmed up, grab a friend to help reinstall it. Don't forget to plug any electrical back in that you may have had to disconnect. And once I have this done, the fascia is just gonna go back into position. Uh, pretty much the opposite way that we removed it. At this point, we could just re-secure our fascia the opposite way that we removed it. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Draw Tight Max Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2015 Honda Odyssey.